There are a number of different positive impacts for Ukraine's defense against Russia that come from this incursion into the Russian Federation. First of all, it shows that the Russian border is undefended and of this, of course, will cause Russia to divert troops away from the defensive lines elsewhere in Ukraine to try to reinforce that border, to try to prevent anything like this happening again. But also, of course, it's part of a pattern of events that show that Russia is not invincible and Ukraine can, in fact, deliver damage to Russia itself. If we think back to, for example, the drone attacks on the Kremlin, exploding uh, small explosive devices on top of one of the iconic buildings for Russian statehood, all of it undermines this narrative that the war will not touch Russia itself. We don't know and we probably can't know just what exactly is the relationship between all of the people who are carrying out actions within the Russian Federation and the Ukrainian armed forces or the Ukrainian state. Here too, we've seen lots of different things which might be linked to Ukraine, which are neither confirmed nor denied by the Ukrainian authorities. But again, it fits part of a pattern that it is not just Ukraine that has an interest in undermining the Russian state and in countering Russia's campaign against Ukraine. Russia will inevitably portray this as being dangerous and escalatory, but that plays into the overall Russian narrative that anything that impedes Moscow or hampers Russia's war effort is going to inevitably cause severe escalation with the West. Now, that's been a highly successful Russian information campaign because it's constrained Western efforts to support Ukraine. And in fact, it's the reason why rules are put on the weapon systems that are supplied to Ukraine, with the West saying you cannot use these to strike into Russia. That is an enormous advantage for Russia in fighting this war because it forces Ukraine to fight with one hand tied behind its back. There's no overall template for the relationship between those and the Ukrainian state. Let's not forget that some Ukrainian armed formations, when the war first erupted in 2014, were set up on an ad hoc basis. And here, too, we've seen volunteer groups allying themselves with the Ukrainian defenses in sometimes a fairly ad hoc manner. So we don't know for certain precisely what is the relationship between some of these groups and Ukraine's official armed forces and to what extent they are armed, aided, facilitated or supported by Ukraine itself. You can see clearly how the current incursion into Russia will assist Ukraine's eventual final offensive when it does actually arrive. However, that doesn't necessarily mean that it's imminent. We've been waiting this for, for this for a long time now, and of course, the more shaping operations Ukraine undertakes to try to prepare for the offensive, the greater its chances of success.